Uh, so good afternoon everyone. I'm very happy to be here and uh, I'm actually very happy also to have this investor pitch. Uh, I really like this format. I think it's one of the things that uh, used to be missing in the past. I think these investments, particular early stage investments that we like, like to talk about is very much a two-way process and I think that aspect of the entrepreneur choosing their investors is something that has been missing for a long, long time and it's very, very important. It's uh, such a long-term relationship and the mutual fit is so important that I think having the investors pitch is a very good thing. So I'm Harald Dina, I'm a partner with Alpine and I will take you through the model that we have at Red Alpine. So we'll go a bit into the details. Uh, on the face of it, uh, Red Alpine really is a uh, a pretty standard venture capital fund, early stage venture capital fund. And I'll move a bit around because the light is not very comfortable. And uh, we're all based in Zurich here, we're investing throughout Europe, uh, and we're an early stage fund. Now, the question is what is under the hood and what is in there for our portfolio companies or what is in there for you as, as entrepreneurs and startups in our world? I'll start up here. We have So early stage, uh, what does that mean for us? Uh, early stage for us means that we are uh, investing in C stage, in Series A stage. Now I know very well that this is a moving target and everybody talks about C and Series A can be all over the place. For us it's important, or usually important, that we have uh, market metrics. So we like to have ideally a product in the market can be very early and some metrics that we can look at uh, to have an assessment for the investment. Uh, so that's our understanding of early stage. And uh, for us it's also important uh, that this early stage is typically the beginning of a very important, or really the first important growth phase that these business models that we typically invest in have. And we like to support our portfolio companies in this very early growth phase, this initial growth phase. This is, this is a phase that you might call kind of the 10 to 100 phase, where companies typically will grow from uh, a team size of 10 people to 100 people in a very, very short amount of time. And this is where a lot of expertise is very helpful when you talk about changing management, management structures, managing the world. And this is where we try to position ourselves and this, this is where we have expertise to support our portfolio companies. This is where we try to help out. So this is what we understand in another term of early stage. The other thing is, what's, oh, I got a bit of issues here with this, so ticket size. That's obviously of interest to you. Uh, our ticket size typically is around 300,000 to 3 million. It spans a broad range because when you're in early stage, uh, you know, there's a lot of, uh, some, are, some are earlier, some are later, and we try to capture the whole area in that space. And uh, what's important for our model is that we go in early, but then we follow on in third funding rounds. So I think that's an important factor. It's good to have investors on board that support you to set up future funding rounds, the following funding rounds, but it's really, really excellent to have, uh, to have investors on board that actually put their own money on the table, on the table also for the further funding rounds. So if you're not only in Series A, but in Series B or possibly Series C, you still follow on, that's a really good step of approval like that. I think is an integral part of our model. We also have the fund. I think it's an important, it's an important point for the entrepreneurs and for the startups to know who is actually behind the fund. Uh, and there are lots of varieties of funds obviously that you can have. You can have funds that have a single LP, you can have funds with multiple LPs. In our case, it's actually a pretty broad LP structure. We have a lot of high net worth individuals, we also have corporates in there, we have uh, some institutional investors, and funds of funds. But what we like and what we see central as part of our, of our model really is the breadth of the investor base, of our investor base, is actually such that we draw a lot of added value from this investor base. So we have a lot of entrepreneurs in there, ex-entrepreneurs, a lot of people who like to be engaged, and a lot of people who add their, their complementary network, and we draw a lot of added value from there. And that means also for uh, internationalization, for added input on specific things like patents and so on. So we like to leverage that a lot. And uh, I can encourage people only to look at the fund when they get some investors on board to see what actually they, who are the investors behind it and how the setup is. Obviously, we as partners, we also invest quite a bit of part of the money comes from us as well. 
Oh, oh my. So here we go. Here we have the team. Um, what's central to our model as well is that we uh, we like to be able to speak eye to eye, so we, we pride ourselves on having uh, broad entrepreneurial experience within the, the team, within the core team. We have experience from uh, founding a company up to taking it to IPO, uh, so we can we really know the other side of the table. I think that's pretty central to uh, to our model as well. And we also uh, have a very lean structure. What I mean, what I mean with lean structure is that, uh, and, and it's a factor that becomes more important. Uh, that's my impression: is that uh, how long does it take to, to make an investment decision? And I think uh, a lot of funds are, are set up that they have uh, investment committees once a, once a quarter. It takes a lot of time. We have a very lean structure. If the core team is working on a day-to-day -day basis, and we make our decisions, if uh, we like the case, usually very very quickly. Uh, that's also a bit of a service to the entrepreneur. I think it's very important as an investor to, uh, to, to be quick and not to waste too much time. Uh, in particular, because the entrepreneur's time is very, very short and um, very, very, uh, very, very important to keep decision processes quick. Uh, the model is a one-stop shop model, which we like to call it a one-stop shop model in the sense that uh, we try to be of help wherever we can with the team uh, or with the network. And uh, these typically things like uh, being a partner for strategic discussions, having uh, an input in business development and leverage in our network for business development, uh, hiring, key hiring, and as I said before, uh, very important factors obviously helping out with the future funding rounds or later funding rounds. And, uh, the last thing that I put on this slide is about deal flow and the investments. Uh, to give you an idea, we have about uh, 2,000 business cases to be looked at every year, and uh, we make five to eight investments every year. So there's a there's a, there's a very very uh, narrow funnel that goes down to the real investments. And for for us, the most important factor, because it's early stage, is always the team. I mean, the team for us is really the thing that can make or break the case when we invest, so uh, that's most important. Other than that, we have uh, the, the factors that were mentioned before already. We're talking about scalability, we're talking about technology, we're talking about market size. So these are things that won't surprise you. Here are a couple of uh, our fintech investments, a selection of what we've done in, in, in recent uh, months and years. So one is uh, N26. Uh, that's the that's the that's Europe's leading mobile bank. They're based in Berlin, and uh, they have started out in 2015, uh, and they just recently put out their growth numbers. So within the last few years, they grew to more than 500,000 customers. We invested uh, just before the launch, so this is uh, maybe a bit of an unusual case in the sense that the, the product wasn't out there yet, but we had some evidence of uh, the team being able to, to build products because they've done it before. They did a little bit of a pivot, and when they pivoted, then we went in. So uh, another thing that's interesting about the N26 case is that uh, we, and that's one way to source our investments, is being proactive. So at that time we were looking at the mobile banking space, and we had a couple of uh, investment opportunities. And we finally settled for N26 because, uh, again, the team factor. We thought that these are the guys who are most likely to pull it off. And uh, so far, uh, it's, it's good to see that we've been proven right. Uh, other thing, uh, Spexio, that's the only one on the slide with Swiss company. Uh, that's uh, a company which is providing uh, accounting and business software as well for SMEs and freelancers. And uh, it's, uh, it's an interesting case in a sense that it, it touches upon the question about internationalization of Swiss companies and uh, it's interesting that we, we initially were planning on uh, starting in Switzerland and then going out internationally very, very quickly. It turned out that uh, they grew very, very nicely in, in Switzerland and it's on the face of this, it's a SaaS tool, so it would have landed itself to be a good internationalization product. Uh, but it turned out that uh, when, you, when you can actually 
capture a market like the Swiss market and the Swiss SME market to a, to a, to a very big extent, uh, we put more value on that. So the first step really was to go deeper into that market and be very, very, really a central piece in the market, the SME market in Switzerland before actually going international. Because that puts you from a valuation perspective beyond the pure SaaS software as a service model. So it really is a deep, uh, intrinsically deep in the SME sector of Switzerland. Then we have uh, Finiato, which was called Blackbeer, which is also based in Berlin. It's SME financing, it's automating data-driven SME financing. And uh, it's, it's built by uh, part of the X-Credit Tech team. So again, this was an investment that was very much driven by, uh, it's an early investment, uh, again, very much driven by the team or the perception of the team that we had behind it. TechFix is one of our most recent investments. Again, in Berlin, it's, uh, it has Swiss perspective because it's two Swiss founders, the other founders of small PDF. Uh, so again, you see the recurring theme that we like uh, entrepreneurs that probably have a track record, but that they are a proven team track record in particular. And they are providing, uh, for starting with Germany, they're providing a tech solution, so a chat on, on mobile where you can actually very, very easily put in your tax return and then with one click you can submit it to the tax authorities. And it initially, it right away tells you how much you get in you to get uh, paid back from the tax authorities. Very early investment again. Uh, just to give you a bit of an idea that the breadth of things that we invest in in FinTech is very, very broad. Uh, and we go in early and we like good teams. I should show uh, a map of, uh, of Europe. It's totally useless if you look that way. But the uh, <laughs> for us is that we are investing in, in Europe with a focus on the dark area. I've mentioned a couple of points here. Uh, why do we do that? Or why have we done so in the past? Uh, one reason is that we, with our model that is very much close, being close to our, to our portfolio companies, it's an advantage to, be, to really have them in Germany and Switzerland, maybe in Austria and in the surrounds. We don't want anything you know, that's too far away where we cannot be in personal contact within a very short amount of time. So that is all the other reasons that we are very we have a very good network in these, these geographies. Uh, again, it helps us source of good deals, but it also helps our portfolio companies because again it's a network that's very engaged with a network that helps also develop our portfolio companies. The third thing that's very important is and um, we like is that we do value a lot of synergies in our portfolio. We do have a lot of workshops across our portfolio companies. It's very interesting to have portfolio companies now that have been through a growth stage already, like N26, and some who are at the beginning of this growth stage, and to exchange, to have them exchange. And that's obviously facilitated if you have them geographically close to each other. So these are a bit of the motivation why we have this geographic focus. Uh, and finally, you need to see the faces. So this is the core team. And as I said before, one, one important factor for us is to have a lean structure, but also have to be, we, we do value having the whole team, the whole operational team, in one place over having them probably spread around, having one in Berlin and so on. Because if you talk, talk among each other on a day to day basis, uh, you know, that, that helps a lot. And also speeding up the decision processes, evaluating cases, because this is the coding that really evaluates all the, all the cases and makes it investment decisions. So I hope that has given you a bit of an idea of how we work and how our model actually suits the portfolio companies that we have, what we look for, and who we like to work with. Thank you very much. So uh, we've got the voting up there. Does anybody have any questions quickly for how while he's on the stage? Bernard. Uh, hello, Bob. How can you hear me? Yep. Uh, uh, just there's a Swiss VC, but three out of four ventures are in Berlin. Do you want to comment on that? Yeah. Um, it, it's, it's, a, it's a very good question. So one thing is that, um, so I should say that, that we have, we do invest in FinTech, mm -hmm. we do a lot in FinTech, or recently did a lot in FinTech, we also do stuff in health tech, for instance. And uh, if you look at the whole portfolio, we have about 50% of it is Switzerland but most of it is coming out of the health, out of the health tech sector. Uh, the reason why we, why we 
haven't done so much on the ICT side so far, I would say is twofold. One thing is that we have a traditionally a pretty strong presence and uh, network also, for example, in Berlin, and that has seen obviously a huge pickup in development of the ecosystem. Probably a development of the ecosystem that we haven't yet seen in Switzerland, nowhere near that. So there were a lot of good cases that we had uh, we had our hands on very early on, so we took advantage of that. And I think it's also that they, they, the point of the internationalization, thinking big, is something that really have been, at least in the past, missing to a certain extent. I think that's changing. I think it's more and more Swiss companies uh, thinking bigger. And I think that will be, going forward, will be reflected in our portfolio as well. So I think that also on the ICT side, the proportion of Swiss companies will be Thank you very much.